Yokoso! Welcome to the digital series of Next Gen Gay Jutsuka. This series celebrates the next generation of talented artists who practice a variety of Japanese cultural arts, have made them their own, and play an important role in sharing the beauty of these art forms with the wider world. Our third featured Gay Jutsuka, or artist, is actually a dynamic duo of Tsugaru Shamisen musicians, Kyle Abbott and Sue Bunyamin. Welcome Sue and Kyle. Tsugaru Shamisen is a type of Shamisen and a style or genre of music that was developed in the Tsugaru Peninsula in the Aomori Prefecture of Japan. Kyle, who hails from Santa Cruz, California, has been playing Shamisen for over 15 years. Sue, who is from Berlin, Germany, has been playing for four and a half years, but both are incredibly talented and play multiple instruments. Sue grew up learning classical music on violin and piano, and Kyle grew up playing bluegrass music with his family on banjo, guitar, mandolin, bass, just to name a few. They are amazing advocates for Tsugaru Shamisen as an art form, and they even make their own Shamisen. You gotta see it on YouTube. Here they are in their first performance, playing a contemporary piece entitled Soul, which comes from Soul Suru, meaning to play an instrument. Afterwards, we'll start with an interview with Kyle. And if you have any questions for him, please submit them via Facebook Live. Enjoy. <laughs> I love that piece. So much energy and fast finger work. So Kyle, welcome. 
Thank you thank for you. being with us today. Thank you for having us. <laughs> um, so how, um, how about I start with asking you to tell us about the Tsugaru Shamisen? What is it made of? And I think that's already one of our questions from Facebook Live, including the pic that you see. And what do you personally love about the instrument? That is a powerful question. Um, there's many, the shamisen is made from many different materials, not only Tsugaru Shamisen, Tsugaru Shamisen, but Nagu, Tenji, all those things. Um, it can be made from uh, cutting, which is um, Burmese teak, which you can call it Burmese teak, um, all the way to kolki, which is red sandalwood from India. Uh, my homemade ones, this is of one, uh, using different kind of materials, which is uh, sapeli, ebony, and yarrow wood. So these days you can do a whole bunch of different things. Um, what was the second part of the question? I forgot. <laughs> and the pick. Oh, the pick. Yes. Tell us about the uh, pick. This is actually tortoise shell uh, called beko. Oh, wow. Uh, but that's also um, plastic, acrylic, wood, and such. Uh, they're also made from can be made in many variations. And what do you personally love about the shamisen? Uh, a, a combination of the percussion and the melody, how you can get a nice solid um, yeah, drum-like beat from hitting the skin as well as melody from hitting the strings uh, is divine. Awesome. So how were you first introduced to the shamisen? We know you play a multitude of other instruments um, how did you come across the shamisen, and who taught you to play? Oh, well, um, excellent question. I, um, when I was 12 or so, I was learning shakwechi, the bamboo flute, with my father, who had played, learned for a long time. Um, through learning shakwechi with him, I heard the sound of shamisen. At that time, there was a fellow, Kevin Metz, who was living in Santa Cruz, a half-Japanese shamisen player, who would do street live, like a few blocks from where I lived on an almost daily basis. I would see him, we kind of got in touch. Uh, he taught me the basics, but mostly it was self-teaching when he moved away, just playing at home, watching YouTube and such. And 15 years later, here you are. Here we are. <laughs> Amazing. And you have uh, also been a driving force in creating um, a global community around Shamisen. Uh, can you tell us about Bachido and what that is? Oh. Um, yes, Bachido. So that is the international shamisen community. Um, just kind of as I was getting into the instrument more, YouTube had just come out and I posted some videos of me building a shamisen and kind of surprised to find that people in the world were interested as well. So just thinking it would be great to get all these people together, like-minded individuals with shamisen. And that's pretty much it. I asked my brother to make a website and kind of just step by step started making learning materials free and otherwise getting connections to Japan to have instruments ac accessible to people around the world and yeah that's amazing and we have one more Facebook live question how does the long neck of the shamisen affect its sound and is there a reason why it's so long excellent question um, <laughs> That is an excellent. Well, the, yes, the the length does affect the sound. There are, <laughs> there actually are certain shamisen called koljamisen, um, that are maybe uh, this much shorter, or such, and the pitch mm -hmm. is higher. Um, I don't know. I don't know why it was made. There's a shamisen for every taste, I guess. <laughs> well, we're. Um... We're getting a lot of a, a variety of shamisen tonight, and we have another piece from you called Yasaburo Bushi, which is a classical folk song or minyo, also from the Aomori Prefecture of Japan, same place where Tsugaru shamisen was based or originated. And afterwards, we'll give Sue a chance to answer some questions for us, so feel free to keep uh, those questions coming via Facebook Live. <laughs>
Awesome. Another piece. And now we have Sue that we're going to ask some questions. Welcome, Sue. Thanks for joining yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> so, Sue, here. yes, you have a classical music background. How does shamisen compare to the other instruments you've learned, piano, violin, and how has it maybe expanded or changed your perspective on music and the kind of music you like to play? Hmm. Um, well, the instrument in itself is sound-wise, it's very different from, say, violin and piano and, in general, all the classical um, European and Western instruments. So that's why I, I felt so drawn to this instrument because the sound was so, was so alluring. And um, well, when, when learning the other instruments, I always stuck to a very classical repertoire where the music is fixed. So you don't have any freedom to, to change something. Of course, you have to express yourself in a way, but it's, it is fixed and even how you, how you do the bowing and such, everything, um, you, you don't have a choice basically. And for shamisen, mm. especially Tsugaru shamisen, it's the other way around. So every song you, you encounter has a variety of different of different <laughs> variations and it's that's so beautiful it's it's pretty intimidating in the beginning because you don't know um, which version you should stick to but it is really um, yeah a, a wonderful kind of freedom you have and it, it really opens opens your mind to new possibilities so that's what changed for me a little bit although I did improvisation and such on the other instruments but it's that it's inscribed into the music. That was that was pretty new to me. And yeah, that's that's why I fell in love even more deeply with it. Amazing. And you're from Berlin, Germany. Is there a lot of interest in playing Shamisen in German uh, Germany? <laughs> I hear you are um, a co founder of an organization called Shamisen Berlin. Indeed. Yes, uh, we founded the first and um, until today, the only shamisen group in Germany, we're an association where you, you can learn how to play the instrument. And we basically, we tour around Germany and uh, perform, but we're uh, well, open for everyone to, to join us and learn the instrument. And I was surprised how many people are interested in learning the shamisen because it's so, it's so rare in Germany. We don't really have a Japanese community unlike in, in the US where there are so many like cultural events around uh, Japanese culture and such. We don't have that in Germany. And still people kind of find their way to our group and start playing shamisen just because they are so um, fascinated by, by the sound. It's really cool. Yeah, it's really cool to see so many different people playing shamisen. Um, and one last question for you, how did you find shamisen? What is your shamisen origin story? Mm. <laughs> I I heard it in different different um, musical contexts, and I can't really pinpoint where I heard it first. But it kind of yeah, wherever it appeared, it kind of it was so special that I yeah I I felt I felt like oh I, I have to I have to know more about this instrument. So yeah, it was wow. So you heard it and you just sought it out. You went yes. for it. You went to yeah. go find it. And you it found a, and you found Kyle too. A very organic, <laughs> organic. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys make an amazing duo. We Thank will um, now share another piece. We're being very lucky to be treated to so many. Another piece is a contemporary piece by Masahiro Nita called Tomodachi no Tori or Friend of Birds.
Well, you two make playing shamisen look so fun. And I want to ask you how you guys met and formed your musical partnership. And what else have you been working on together? Oh, excellent question. I'll do the first one. Um, so uh, I was uh, five years ago or so, we started a international shamisen workshop, a three day event where uh, shamisen players, masters, let's say, would get together and teach. Um, Big Chami set for, for folks <laughs> around the world. Yeah. And for our second, or for our third event, um, I knew about Chami in Berlin, so we connected um, to have the event there. We stayed in touch, and yada, yada, yada. Um, here we are. Here we are. Yeah. And then I, I came to Santa Cruz to learn how to uh, do my own Chami which I couldn't bring back to Santa Cruz this time because um, luggage and stuff. Uh, yeah. And then we. I found that, uh, oh, we, we, we kind of know what we're thinking and such. Uh, yeah. The whole finishing. It thing. clicked. It clicked. It, 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 I mean, it clicked. Something it clicked. Clicked. Yes, you click. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next project, we're working on several projects, but one thing is, uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. No, uh, we're working on um, a workshop that, uh, that connects the psychic community and the Chamisen community, which of course now with the whole COVID thing is kind of, well, uh, not happening, but it's, it, it, will, it will restart again. And it's, it's really, I think, a great to, to, to connect those communities to uh, create even more fun music and um, make it more colorful and playful. So uh, that's one very big, exciting project. Mm -hmm. And we're working on the second edition of the Made in Santa Cruz Beginner Shami Center, which oh, is yes. super affordable and made from local uh, oh i think we're losing your audio a little bit oh, maybe speak uh, into the mic a little uh, bit more yes we're we're building a, we're gonna make a series two of the made in santa cruz shamisen uh called the shaman buddy uh an affordable way for people to get started playing uh yes find out more mid 2021 or early anyway we, we make we make it with these hands these hands it is fun and i've uh, mm -hmm. Um, and Sue, move your mic closer too. <laughs> we want to hear you better. But you're, to recap, you're saying Shami Buddy. You're going to teach people to play Shamisen and make them with their hands. Oh, no, actually, we'll be making the Shamisen for them. We're saving You will be making the Shamisen step. for them. Exactly. Okay. We've already made 100. Okay. 100 are out from everywhere from the U.S. to uh, Poland, um, wow. Europe, and such. People have. Um, got them and are learning how to play. We've Amazing. Only, almost cut our fingers off twice. Just me. Okay. Wow. Just me. That's that's a little scary, but I think you know. I'm glad you oh. did it. You're still all operational. <laughs> All right. Well, very cool. You can find out more about Kyle and Sue and their amazing work on nextgenjca.com, our website. Um, and uh, considering uh, the quarantine, we'd love for everyone to pay attention to the following messages we have for you. Hi, I'm Etsuyoshi, and I welcome you to my Neat Asian Things store in San Francisco's Japan Town. I'd like to bring you items that uniquely highlight Japanese culture, such as a focused collection of stunning Japanese fabrics. I carry Dabuton, Zafu, Noren, and Yukata, all using Asian-themed designs. My store is popular for its quality futon unique tatami platform bed, and tatami mats for floor use. People like my reasonably priced Japanese ceramics and ironware in beautiful colors and textures. I have a stone lanterns for your Asian garden, lighting based on Asian designs, and furniture to create that special Japanese space in your home. There's much more to see. Remember, you can shop safely here. Now more than ever, I welcome your visit to my store and to Japan Town. Thank you very much. Arigatou gozaimasu. I love 
love doing kendo. I love making Japanese fortune tellers. I love singing Japanese songs. I learned all about Japanese history at Dadunanogaku. I love seeing my friends. I love assisting and helping all the kids at Dadunanogaku. I love learning to make tofu. I love making bento boxes. I love making a Dadunanogaku. Dadamanagako has been around for over 40 years. In our Nikkei summer program, it's been our primary mission to provide our students with a strong sense of positive self-image associated with their Nikkei roots, and also educate them about their Nikkei heritage. During this pandemic, for the first time in our operations, we've had to close our traditional programming, but our annual operating costs still remain. And with much uncertainty about how next summer will be unfolding, we're asking the greater community to consider joining with us to help keep our current programming going for future generations. If you would consider supporting us now, please go to our website and click under fundraising. We appreciate any help that you can lend us. Domo arigato gozaimasu. The pandemic continues to be a challenge for a lot of our cultural businesses and organizations. Um, so please consider supporting them. To conclude our pr program, uh, we present you with a final performance by Kyle and Sue called Ichidan, or First Step, a Tsugaru Shamisen solo piece that apparently every Tsugaru Shamisen player knows, but performed in a style that really showcases Kyle and Sue's teamwork. That is what Sue called a common parlor trick the other day. I don't know how common it is, but it's certainly impressive. <laughs> you two are amazing. Um, and I'd love Thank to give you. you both a chance to give a shout out, a final shout out to your friends and family. Uh, oh, I'll go in German for my for my German peeps. Uh, awesome. Hallo nach Deutschland in die Heimat. Herzlichen Dank fürs uh, Zuschauen und für die Unterstützung. Vor allem an die liebe Kissy. Vielen Dank für die Blumen. Vielen Dank. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, yeah. Uh, love it. Love you. Love everyone. Um, big thanks to Shirley. For big thanks to Shirley. Happen. Right, 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 right. It's a great, great project, and we're so happy and honored to be part of it. And we hope that uh, we, together with the other artists, can inspire many people to pursue their um, Japanese arts because they are wonderful and beautiful and give it a go. Those are just the words I was <laughs> intending to say. I know. Perfect. Like yes. See teamwork. Yes, I think you've all inspired a lot of us to go play the shamisen and make some without cutting fingers off. Um, so thank you again for being here. Mm -hmm. That's it for our third presentation of Next Gen Jake Next Gen. I knew that was going to happen at some point. Next Gen Gejutsuka. Thank you so much to Kyle and Sue. Please join us for our fourth episode next week, Tuesday, July 21st at 8 p.m. Pacific time, featuring an esteemed Koto musician, Brian Mitsuhiro Wong, who is the son and protege of our lovely series producer and Koto master, Shirley Kazuyo Muramoto. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. As a reminder, we're also still accepting video submissions for our final episode's virtual bone dance until next week, Wednesday, July 22nd. We'd love for you to join in if you haven't. Exactly. Uh, so please check out our website, nextgenjca.com, for directions to submit your dance. 
A very special thank you to our sponsors, the SF Japantown Foundation and Berkeley Japanese American Citizens League who made Next Gen Gaijutsuka possible. Have a great week and see you next time. Matane!